All right, so in this video, I'm gonna have this shoe not only move, the last video we just moved it across these tiles, but I wanna make it be able to go around corners and I want to be able to pass go and have that event registered. So if you don't have this world right here, go ahead to this web, uh, what do you call this, uh, URL. Hold on, URL right here. I'll put it in the description. Hit these three dots and then hit edit. And then you're gonna get this exact same world and you can follow along. All right, so now that we have that, first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna make corners to, to go around. So I only have tiles for this one side here. So let's go ahead, open up our workspace, look at our board game, and then open up tiles. I'm gonna copy these 10 tiles. There's 10 tiles here, turn collisions off. And then I'm gonna do, I'll just do a control D. All right, now I can move them. I turned the collisions off so that they wouldn't bump up above the other tiles. Let's see, here we go. And we can move this in place. I'm gonna turn collisions back on, hit the move tool. Now I can line things up. There we go. Looking good, that's good. All right, so here, this is a new tile here. I'm gonna hit the control or the alt, alt button on my Windows keyboard. Whoops, click off, off to the side, hit alt, click on that, and that will select something inside the model. And this is just visiting, right? If it's a Monopoly board, just visiting. So I'm gonna give all of my tiles unique names. Let's see, I'll do an alt here. I'll just do a couple of these so you can see how it's done. Um, this is what, St. Charles. St. Charles Place, I'll just call it St. Charles. It's got a different color, it's got like a magenta. And this is an electric company, I'll just do electric company real quick. So electric, for the chances, I just made like, I'll make chance one, chance two, chance three. There's gonna be three chances total. Um, I want them to be unique. So that's good for now. I'll, uh, I don't want you to painfully watch me change every every name on the on the board. But one other thing we have to do is in board utils, go to your board utils, and the max is gonna be 40, the number of tiles, it's no longer 10. So change that to 40. And for this board map here, I'm gonna have 40 tiles total. So I'm gonna copy those 10 entries, control V, control V, control V. This one will end at 40. Likewise, I don't want you to have to watch me like change every single one of these values, but I'll do two of them just so that you get the idea. So this will be 11. This is just visiting, just visiting right here at 12. This is St. Charles. So you get the idea. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video. I'm gonna fill up all the board, all the way down to boardwalk here, and then update my board utils, this map right here and then I'll continue. So I'm gonna pause. All right, so now you can see that I completed my board and I renamed all of these tiles appropriately. You can open this up and you see all the different tiles. I also, in board utils, uh, filled out this map. They don't have to be the same as mine, um, but they should be unique. Pay special attention for the corner tiles. So if you made a smaller board, just keep track of these. So I have 11, 21, and 31 for the corner tiles. And of course, number one is going to be uh, the, the, the go, pass go. It's gonna be looping around. So if you have different numbers, just remember that the corner ones are the ones you need. And these, as long as they're unique in name, you won't have any problem. They don't have to match exactly. They don't even have to match closely. So let's look at move piece because the first objective here is to get this shoe to come to just visiting and then keep going if we get like a 12, we get some sort of rollover in this corner and we want the speed to be the same and we wanna make it look like we're counting the tiles. So right here, I notice I have a problem. If I get to like say tile 30 or 38 and I over roll the board number, right? Let's say I have 38, I roll a four. Now I'm at 42, that's no good. This map only goes up to 40, so we need to handle that situation. We need to do a rollover. So I'll say if the dust tile number 
is greater than the number of tiles, then let's make the desk tile number, take the old desk tile number, subtract the number of tiles. So let's take a look here. We got, let's say this is 38. We roll a four right here. Oh my God, you get the idea. Then this is going to be 42. Well, 42 is greater than the number of tiles. So 42 minus the number of tiles, which is 40, equals 2. That's perfect. That's put to me at 42. That's what I want. Um, so now we handle the rollover situation. All right, underneath here, we'll have our tween. And right now, what it would do, it would move directly to whatever tile. So if we rolled a 12, it would go straight to electric company, but it wouldn't stay on the board. It wouldn't stay on the tiles. It would cr cut across the board, which I suppose is okay, but I don't want that. So I'm going to make a tote tween time and that's going to be the roll value that's the the total tweening time i'm going to use for the movement and then i'm going to set up a handle corner function that'll check the corners uh, we don't have it yet but let's go ahead and this is where we're going to put it i'm going to get a a t t time i'll do a t1 time All right that's a tween one time and then I'll do a comma, and I want to return the current tile number also from this handle corner, and that's going to be the corner number. I'll say handle corner. We don't have it, so we're going to get an error, but we're going to make it. Handle corner. I'm going to pass in the item to move. I'm going to pass in the corner number, which is 11 for my first corner. The current tile number prior to handle corner, which is where we're starting from when we do our roll. And then I'm going to do a desk tile number. All right, let me make this a little smaller so we can fit everything on there. All right. So then whenever I split my tweening time, which is what you're going to see what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this total tween time is now going to equal the total tween time minus t1 time and then i'll do the t2 time t3 time etc so here this is going to be the remain it should be the remainder tween time that's what i should have called it but this is good this will work total tween time and then down here i don't want the roll value i want the total tween time the time left yeah i probably should call that remaining tw tween time Anyway, let's do our handle corner. Let's copy this and create this function. All right, so we're going to come up here and we'll say, let's do a local function. We're not going to call it outside the script. Local function, whoops, handle corner. I accidentally did two of those. Hit the enter button. This I'm going to make corner number because I'm going to use this for all the corners and what else should we do I think I'm going to do a different one for the past go so I'll just do I'll just do the uh, 11 21 and 31 so I'm going to make a variable called t time for tween time it's going to be zero now we might not have to handle a corner so first what we want to do is check if the current tile number is less than the corner number, cor let's do corner number. Instead of corn number, let's change that to corner number. And the desk tile number is greater than the corner number. Ah, then we have a corner to worry about. So that, now we're going to do stuff. So now the TT time is actually going to be meaningful. We don't want it just to be zero. We're going to say the corner number minus the current tile number. So if we're at five and we roll a seven, we're going to get to the 12th tile. Um, we want this to be from five to our, our number 10 tile or our number 11 tile, our rollover tile. 
There we go. And let's see what else I got to do. Now I'm going to get my new current tile and it's going to be my corner number because now that we did that movement, when we get return from our function, we're going to start our tween from that current tile after this handle, after this handle corner is completed. Um, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I'm going to take my tween time here. Not tween time from the tween info down to the weight. Now I'll stick that right in there. This time is going to be that desk tile. We need a new destination tile. All right, so the destination tile will actually be the corner tile now. It's just going to be a temp desk. We'll say temp desk tile. We'll say board utils. Get tile by number, and that's going to be the corner number. That's going to be our destination for now. So this temp desk tile will be desk tile. This right here, tote time, will be the time. All right, now what we're going to do is we'll return TT time and then the new current tile number. Notice if we did not do a corner, this is going to be zero and this is going to be the original current tile number. We will, we will, we will not have changed it. So if we're feeling brave, let's do that for three of our corners, but not the Pasco corner. So we'll say control C, control V, control V. Let's make this a T1 time. Make this a T2 time, or a T1, a T2, and a T3 time. This corner is gonna be 21, right? That's free parking or something like that. This corner is gonna be 31, that's the go to jail. Everything else looks the same. You could actually make a little loop for that, but I think it'd be more trouble than it's worth. And then our total time, we want to subtract out. So we're doing, we're subtracting the total of any corner that took effect. Remember, if the corner didn't fire, if the handle corner if statement didn't fire, T, T1, T2, or T3, whichever one it's for, is going to be zero. So that'll be all right. We'll just be adding zero to it. It's no big deal. All right, now down here, that's looking good. I think we're ready to test. Yeah. All right, let's go over to our test script. Remember we wrote a test script, board test. We haven't we haven't tied it in with a game loop and the dice yet. So we'll go here and we're going to go to number 5. Then let's go to Let's just do a 12. That should take us to electric company. Let's do another 12. That should take us around the next corner, which was uh, free parking. This one should take us around go to jail. Yep, that's it. I'm just looking at the board. Let's play it. Let's see what we got. Oh, I should put the view window to make sure we don't have any errors. Output. All right. So we did a play from here. Our tile is moving. It should stop two seconds here at Electric Company. It went around the corner. Perfect. Now it's going to keep going. And we did another 12. So it should be one, two, three, four. It should be here. It's either Illinois or Indiana. I forget. Boom. We wait two seconds. And now we want to pass our go to jail. And it's going to go, what, six out or something. Looks good. Looks good. Now we have to handle the go, the pass go. All right. So we'll go to our board utils. And let's do a pass go. So it's going to be very similar. The only reason I'm making it separate is because I want to be able to handle the money, passing back money in case, you know, because you get like $200 for passing go, right? So this is going to be a T4 time. 
Let's add a T4 time here. Let's call this pass go. Right? And we know go is one. I think, ah, let's put a corner number in there anyway. So one. And we don't have the pass go defined. Let's go up here. I'm going to copy this. A lot of it's going to be the same. And then we'll paste. This will be pass go. All right, so the t time, uh, tt time is good. I think for here, we could do it this way. Um, it'd just be simpler to do it like this. If the current tile number is actually greater than the desk tile number, I don't see any problem with that. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Then we'll go ahead and do this corner number. Don't do corner number. That's one, right? Uh, maybe we should have made it like 40. I'm going to do the number of tiles. And then this is good, right? Uh, yeah, number of tiles. This is good. That's perfect. That'll work. That's good. Everything looks fine. Do we have our desk? Right, the corner number. Yeah, that's a one. After that, let's go ahead and put a message. Print, uh, you passed go. $200. So we're obviously going to have to pass money back to our game loop here. Um, so that's, that's something we're going to have to handle. That's another good reason why we have pass go is a little bit different. We're going to return different values. Probably just going to add the money value or some sort of award value. All right, let's check, let's check out our, let's do another test. Instead of going 12, let's go 10, 10, and then this will get us to our next one, right? Let's make these shorter. One, one, and we'll pass go. Now when I'm testing, I'm gonna run a few more of these too, just to make sure we don't have any errors. I'm gonna call this one 12, because I wanna go past go. I don't wanna stop right on go. Let's go ahead and try it. But I don't wanna bore you too much with all the testing. I'm just gonna do this one test. If it works out, I'll test this off camera. Oh, rats, I wanted to uh, I wanted to watch it start. It already started, that's fine. We'll come over here and observe it. Good, it stopped at my just visiting. It's gonna go over to free parking. Yep, free parking. Good, so it's handling the edge conditions where you actually land on the corner. But there's a lot of other things we're gonna have to test. And we get to our go to jail. Good. And now we should head all the way over here. And then two. Uh, that'll be like, what, community chest or something. Cool. That looks good. And we have our U Passed Go $200. So now we have some good movement around the board. I'll test this. And if it all passes, I'll just, I'll produce this video. If it doesn't pass, I'll do another one.